2,716 years ago, within the shadow of beautiful Mount Olympus in the land of ancient Greece, was born an institution known as the Olympic Games. Emblematic of these glorious athletic festivals is the torchbearer who down through the ages has carried aloft the precious flame to the far corners of the earth. Rome, Egypt, India, China. Through forests and trackless wastes, over mountains and sea, down to the present day. The ritual of the Olympiads demands that this heroic flame shall not become extinguished, but shall be kept burning at all costs, serving as a beacon whose unfailing light shall guide all athletes in fair play and clean sportsmanship, to give them courage and forever remind them of the brave and the strong whose nerves of steel and cool heads shall keep alive and preserve at any sacrifice this precious spark for posterity, that all mankind shall benefit by the light that never fails. The first Olympic event was foot racing. Therefore, let us briefly analyze the fundamental strides. First, the sprinter. Note the powerful piston-like action of the legs as compared to the long distance or space-devouring stride of the miler. And then that of the marathon runner, whose effortless, untiring stride carries him for amazing distances. And last but not least, the walk, perhaps one of the most graceful of all, exacting the perfect coordination of all the muscles of the body. Note the similarity of the walk to a dance. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Um. Shake, uh, we're off the track. Uh, track. Oh, yes, a uh, track. Uh, one of the most spectacular of all track events is the hurdles. Ready, set, go! <laughs> Nothing can compare to the ease and grace of the hurdles for sheer beauty of motion. Beginning with a short run, the pole is planted in the pit. The swing up. Hold it. We are now at the apex of the vertical lift. Notice the position of the legs just coming into the jackknife. Observe the swing of the hips and the knee flexation as the legs progress into their arc, preparatory to crossing the bar. Crossing the... You know, that reminds me of a poem by Tennyson, Crossing the Bar. Sunset and evening star and one clear call for me. And may there be no moaning of the bar when I put out to sea. Don't you think that's a lovely thought? I do. All right, jump. Oh, oh, oh yes. <clears throat> uh, from this position, the body arches itself in a graceful glide, clearing the crossbar and settling it gently into the sawdust below. muscular development, plus height, weight, and mental alertness. The hammer must be swung in a circle until terrific speed is attained.
And last, but far from least, the decathlon. A group of ten events arranged to test the athlete's stamina and power. The average man is born with an inborn urge to gamble. Take the case of Mr. G.G. G. Geef. Geef was never too busy to enjoy risking his hard-earned dough on the chance of making an easy buck. Football pool, George? You bet. He was a soft touch for the latest gambling fads of the moment. Chain ladder? The Chinese velocity? Join a pyramid club? Irish sweepstakes? Hey, George, not you for lunch. OK, Joe. Gee, I won again. Thanks, George. At every turn, Mr. Geef met with opportunities to gamble. And loose change always burned a hole in his pocket. He was a pushover for a one-armed bandit. average gambling man is not easily discouraged. He feels his persistence will be rewarded and that opportunity awaits just around the corner. Ah, uh, come to Pappy. Hey, from the gator. Yeah. Be nice, Dice. Come here, come here. Sure, Dice. Mr. Geef knows that when Lady Luck gives him the sign and the dice are hot, <coughs> then is the time to back it up with the old sock. Save me. Oh, hum. Easy come, easy go. Taxi! <laughs> Mr. Geef is nobody's fool. Therefore, his winnings are always deposited in sound business investments. There they go. <laughs> Occasionally, Geef's investments fail to pay off. 
But in spite of these financial fluctuations, the average man is a good loser. How you doing, George? Swell, Al. Just swell. Oh, fudge! Of all Gosh, the gambling oh. games, there was none Mr. Geef enjoyed as much as the cozy atmosphere and the congenial company of a friendly game of poker. Hi, you fellas. Hi. Uh, hello. Uh, ah, put up a shut up. Friendly greetings over, George Geef analyzes his opponent's hands by closely studying their subtle facial expressions. Of course, this strategy is a complete flop if the players happen to be wearing their poker faces. The player must be alert and quick to take advantage of every unseen opportunity. One must keep his eyes peeled, even in a friendly game. Play waxes hot. Uh, I raise. Raise again. I raise you. I call. The game becomes tense. Card. Two. Give me five. I'm pat. The stakes are high. Raise. App. Call. Your light. I bump you. But Mr. Geef's enjoying every minute of it. Raise you. Up four. Four and three more. Raise. Up another. Mm. Take it and bump two blues. I call. I call. What you got? Now then. Me too. Me too. Beats here. A pair of deuces? I thought you were bluffing. Break them in, George. Oh. Oh. Thanks, fellas. Lucky George Geef, the winner. Oh, my gosh, it's getting late. Cash me in. I gotta go. But so, uh, uh, he's a... Hey, George, what's the idea? George Geef, tonight is your lucky night. Now, if your luck holds out, you can sneak in without waking the little woman. The coast's clear. Easy does it. One false move and... George! Oh. What do you mean coming home at this hour? Take that! What do the neighbors think? Sick friend, fool. You've been gambling, that's what. I work and save and you just throw your money away. Think of all the bills we owe. Why, George, honey, you won. Uh-huh. Took the boys to the cleaners. Oh, how nice. Now I can get that cute hat, new dress, shoes, paper the hall, new stove, fur coat, take a trip. Easy come, easy go. vacation. Ah, there is nothing as pleasing to the grateful employee as his two weeks vacation. With pay. Fishing at Fond du Lac, sunrise in the Rockies, basking on the beach, dude ranching, golfing, boating, and hunting in the North Woods. One minute to go. Packed and ready. Home sweet. <laughs> Open road beckons, ever onward. <laughs> Leading us to quaint, out of the way places. Say, uh, can you fix this? Um... Can I fix it, boy? Listen, Buster, what I know about fixing these buggies, the fella was in here just the other day, the same model fixed it in a jiffy. Needs a new carburetor, generator shot, pistons, loose firing, batteries busted, plugs, brakes, cylinders cracked. Uh, Yep, looks like all you need's a new motor. 
Anytime you need anything else fixed, just drop a vow. We'll see you. Oh, how about this here in a tire? <laughs> One meets such interesting people on one's travels. Oh, give you a lift, mister? Hmm. No radio, no heater. Tires thin, needs paint, older model. Uh, uh, forget it. <laughs> ah, the lure of the open road. Pausing for a moment, basking in the sun. As we drink in the surrounding atmosphere. Ta-ta, trailer! A slight detour and... We are rewarded by a majestic view. As the setting sun dips below the blue horizon, the weary traveler seeks a place to rest. Cozy cottage with all the comforts of home. And one is quickly lulled to sleep by the gentle sounds of the night. Pleasures of night drive. <laughs> Passing cars gaily salute us on our way with lights that gleam with crystal clearness. Finally, the perfect haven for rest and relaxation, with good food and excellent service, and complete privacy.
Howdy, strangers. Now, I ain't aiming to pick no argument or nothing. Understand? Because anybody knows them old kibbered wagons look powerful slow creaking and groaning across them plains. But let me tell you about one of them wagon trains that sought a speed record back in uh, 48. Or was it 49? Ain't been busted yet. No siree. Not even by one of your dad blasted area plane. Now we were just leaving Nebraska, going into Florida. Hold on there. Weren't Florida. Were, uh, Pennsylvania. Well, anyways, I was up ahead to scouting for engines on my old horse, Hamlet. Called him Hamlet because he had a pretty bad case of stage fright. Well, we kept pushing west through New York, Buffalo, New York. When doggone my britches if and we ain't spotted by them there pesky redskins. in these whole United States gathered for a powwow. They were all of them there. A Blackfoot, an old Apache chief, yep, an old crazy horse, and a Cleveland in Then come Big Chief, rain in the face.
in a more flight fly. And another engine bit the dust. They threw everything at us but the kitchen sink. All of a sudden, we had come out of ammunition. Our goose sure was cooked. We was goners. Dead ducks. Wiped out. Massacred. Hey, wait a minute. Whoa, hold on there. Why, just when we was about to give up, along come a tornado. A twisting and a turning and a swallowing up everything. Just like one of them uh, newfangled vacuum cleaners. Swallowed up every last one of them. Wagons and all. Well, partner, that old tornado just took us across them plains and mountains. Quicker than you could say Jack Robinson. <laughs> some of us settled in Oregon and Nevada and in California. And some of us went a little too far west. So long, strangers. Don't take no wooden engines. as we turn the calendar back 500 years and bring you the 123rd running of the Canterbury Tournament at Blunderstone Castle. The weather is clear, the turf is fast, and it looks as if all attendance records will be smashed to smithereens this afternoon. Yes, sirree. Red on plum pudding, punch pudding, dear. Get your program, dear folks. You can't do one night from another without a program. To the winner of this world-famous tournament today will go riches, honor, and glory, and the frail, white, delicate hand of the lovely Princess Esmeralda, fairest flower in all the kingdom. What a prize for stout-hearted knights to do and die for. And now we take you to the dressing room of the challenger, the loin steak. Fourteen points of brawn, muscle, and courage, blonde and blue-eyed, ready to pit his strength against the champion for the heavyweight cast-iron slugging title of the British Empire. And here we have the little man who ever since early morning has been preparing his night for the big day. Introducing Cedric, the loyal and humble servant who dreams of some afternoon when he too will become a knight and face death for the smile of a lovely princess. <sighs> but today Cedric's duty is to see to it that his master is completely overhauled. Valves ground, new piston rings, brakes relined, body simonized and a complete change of oil. <laughs> moment is drawing close now. The crowd is on his toes and yelling for action. And we go into final preparations for the big event. The all-important last-minute touches that may very well snatch victory from defeat. Uh-oh, hurry, Cedric, hurry! Get rid of it, stupid, anywhere, under the rug. No time to lose. Before you can say Jack Robbins and the two sturdy gladiators will be out there. Hurry up, Cedric. Slugging it out for the championship. The betting is four to one in favor of the champion, but the challenger is going in there with all the confidence in the world, and there may be an upset if Saloin State can turn the tables. It's only a matter of seconds now before the two armor plated contestants meet face to face on the field of honor. The last minute preparation. But wait, folks. Something's gone wrong here. Saloin State is out, completely out. A cold night. There's been a slip up, and it looks as though the tournament may be off. But there's still Cedric. Look here, Cedric. You're in the armor now. Fate has smiled upon you. Lucky stiff. This is your big chance. Just imagine you, Cedric, can be a hero and win the glory, the riches, and the honor, to say nothing of the fair hand of the Princess Esmeralda. Think of it, Cedric. The chance of a lifetime. And now, coming out on the field, that night of night, circumference, the champion. 
old iron pants, they call him, never lost his seat in combat. But many a gallant knight has gone down to defeat neath the hoofs of his trusty war horse. And here we have the challenger. It's the loyal Cedric doubling for Sir Loinstein, willing to do or die for his master. Or could it be the fair Princess Esmeralda? <laughs> Looks like love at first sight. With an inspiration like this, how could anyone fail? Easy there, Cedric. Easy does it. And now the knights and horses are in the starting gate. They're all ready. Battle stations, visors down, lances set. Any minute now. Although circumference the champion is the odds-on favorite, ladies and gentlemen, anything can happen out here this afternoon, and probably will. The crowd is waiting for the starting signal. It's just a matter of seconds now. The fans are on their toes, and here they go! The champion is going to the front, and here comes Cedric the challenger. Both boys are moving into the furious pace. It's going to be ghastly. They're moving closer now. Cedric is on the rail. Here's the champion. They're coming up to the line of scrimmage. It's all over, it's all over. With Circumference, the winner, and still champion. Bravo. Bravo. Boo! Boo! But just a minute, folks. Hold your horses. What's this? Yes, it is. Believe it or not, little old Cedric is in there again. What a fighting heart. And now the champion sets himself for another charge. There's the wind-up, the pitch, and the champion connects. It's a line drive going over third base. No, a long foul ball into the left field bleachers. But little Cedric is right back in there again. It's a hot night we have out there this afternoon. But the champion is on his toes, too, and that's a mighty fistful of sword he has there. And this time he means business. He's going in for the kill. Poor little old Cedric. This really looks like the beginning of the end, folks. No knight living could stand up under this powerhouse fence. It may be the kid's last ride, but he's right in there pitching. And he connects. What a sock this little fella packs. And the champ rocks back on his heels. Little Cedric sure sprung a surprise that time. But the champion is splashing back now with a right and a left. A right and a left. He's making every blow count. One, two, three, bow! No holds barred in this battle. There's a smashing right, and Cedric loses his head for a moment. But now the champion takes one on the noggin. The champ is taking a little more time now. He's lost a little bit of his confidence. This challenger is no green buff. He moves in and lets fly with a whirlwind attack. A left, a right, a left, a right, right, left, right, left. The champ is throwing everything he's got at him, Cedric. Now, what's holding this kid up? He can't take this bombardment much longer. Why doesn't somebody stop this order? It just don't seem human. It's unbearable. There ought to be a law. Why, the whole suit will have to be scrapped, including Cedric. But wait, the champion seems to be tiring. Those sledgehammer blows are losing some of their steam. Champ is breathing hard now. And again, we take you back inside with Cedric. Let he cool this boy. But wait, something's happening out there. Let's have a look-see. Could it be that old Iron Pants is beginning to weaken? Yes, he reels in his saddle. And it looks like he's going down. Yes, he's down, he's down! And that wraps it up, folks. The winner and new champion, little old Cedric. Well, that's the way it goes, folks. Chump one day, champ the next. What a day for a night, and what a night for a day. November 23rd. After an uneventful voyage, we sighted Africa, the dark continent, land of adventure. Africa, the unknown, black, foreboding, mysterious Africa. November 24th. We landed on the romantic Ivory Coast. Rounding up porters for our safari, we pushed off toward the interior. November 25th, safari across vast stretches of wastelands through the forest of Mubasa. Up 
the slopes of Mount Mukakia, down the valley of the Umbambugi, over crocodile infested waters, onward, ever onward pushed our safari, out onto the open veld. February 11th. Suddenly, we reach the interior. Pitched camp near a waterhole. And was swallowed by the inky African night. During the night, our waterhole was visited by many strange and interesting animals. One, a superb specimen of the heart beast. Obviously named because of the unusual design of his... Uh, horns. <laughs> a handsome zebra also became thirsty. <laughs> Another rare fellow was the spotted or laughing hyena. <laughs> then came a beautiful specimen of the warthog. And last but not least, a very rare and unusual species of... <laughs> I too became thirsty. <laughs> and after some difficulty, succeeded in quenching my thirst. February 12th. Ah, uh, the African sunrise. At the crack of dawn, I leap from my couch, ready for my morning plunge. Oh, the world owes me a woman. Be light a little let alone. <laughs> After a refreshing dip, I returned to my tent and quickly dressed. Friday the 13th. Accompanied by my number one boy, I set forth in search of the biggest game Africa had to offer. Suddenly... <laughs> a tick bird who always makes his home on the back of the black rhinoceros. <gasps> black rhinoceros! <laughs> this quaint little fellow pays for his room and board by warning his cumbersome companion of impending danger. as my nerves permit. Permit? Did I have a permit to shoot a rhino? It was either him or me. It was me.
And so we broke camp and started homeward. Out across the open belt pushed our safari, across crocodile infested waters, up the valley of the Umbambugi, down the slopes of Mount Macacchia, through the forest of Mubasa, back until we reached the ivory coastline. Nor did the ocean stop us as we sailed for far horizons, sailed into the tropic sunset. Thus we left this land of romance with its beasts of belt and forest, left it for the other hunters. And believe me, they can have it. experience. Man bidding his puny strength against the pent-up fury of the tiger. 500 pounds of the most vicious, cruel, merciless, sly, mean, fiendish, ferocious killer to tread the shadowy depths of the jungle. <laughs> set foot. rest and refreshment before pursuing our hazardous quest. Tiger country. Unseen danger lurking behind every tree. Creeping, crawling danger, ready to spring upon its unsuspecting prey. The Royal Bengal Tiger. Lord of the jungle. <laughs> A cruel, merciless killer. He eats nothing but meat. Man, he likes to eat. A man-eater. <laughs> Sharp talons that can rend a man to shreds. Its natural coloration blends into the surrounding foliage and becomes well-nigh invisible. Its roar, the voice of doom. Meow. Grimly, we stalk our quarry. Suddenly, a spore! Instantly, we're on the alert, pulse quickening, keenly aware to a sense of danger that pervades the atmosphere. Oh, my God. 
lost his stripes. sir.
It's a lovely day, you betcha. <laughs> Everything is gay, you betcha. <laughs> La 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 ha <laughs> ha 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 ha
better watch your step, Wilbur. They're getting wise to you. Hoppers in the weeds. <laughs> car in the hands of the average man is rapidly facing extinction. Truly, the average man is a creature of strange and unorthodox habits. Take the case of Mr. Walker. Mr. Walker lives in a quiet, respectable neighborhood. He is a typical average man, considered a good citizen and of average intelligence. He is a kindly man, courteous, punctual, and honest. Good morning, Mr. Walker. Good morning to you, Mr. Geef. Lovely day. Mr. Walker wouldn't hurt a fly, nor step on an ant. He believes in live and let live. Mr. Walker owns a motor car and considers himself a good driver. But 
Once behind the wheel, a strange phenomenon takes place. Mr. Walker is charged with an overwhelming sense of power. His whole personality changes. Abruptly, he becomes an uncontrollable monster, a demon driver. Mr. Walker is now Mr. Wheeler, a motorist. Hey, Keith, watch where you're going, stupid! Hey, do you think you're on the whole road? Hmm. Of course I own the road. My taxes pay for them. I voted for road bonds. I paid for the roads. And I'll use them. Get off my road! Move over! Let it pass! It's a beautiful day. Fresh air. Nice music. Hey, get over, you road hog! Oi, oi. Oh, 30 seconds gone from your life. Gee whiz! Oh, dear me! Thing busted! Oh, want to race, do they? Well, they ain't gonna get ahead of me. What luck, a parking place, the motorist pot of gold. Not everyone has a spot to park it. Deprived of his protective armor, Mr. Wheeler, motorist, becomes Mr. Walker, pedestrian. Of a pedestrian crossing the street, it has often been said, fools step in where angels fear to tread, or... A friend in need is a friend indeed. Where there's a will, there's a way. Mr. Walker gains the haven of his car with the knowledge of how the other fellow feels, except once behind the wheel, Mr. Walker reverts to form and again becomes Mr. Wheeler, motorist. Mr. Wheeler, you've broken your toy. But let this be a lesson, Mr. Wheeler. Drive safely. 
play fair. Give the other fellow a break and... Ah, uh, shut up! day's toil is over, are you the type person who drags his weary body home, slumps into a chair feeling beat, bored, bushed, and listless? If so, you need a hobby. Take your pick, pick, picture, that's it, photography. For the beginner, a few minor bits of equipment are necessary. Meters, photo floods, tripods, reducer, enlarger, printer, developer, hypo, paper, cutter, trimmer, buckets, pans, water, bulbs, lights, gloves, boots, trays, powder, reflectors, and camera! With these few inexpensive items, the ardent amateur photographer is ready to pursue his hobby. Once the equipment is properly placed about the dark room, we are ready to load the camera uh, with film. Only boom, 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 boom. <laughs> there are various types of film. Those most commonly used are roll film, film packs, and cut film. is loaded correctly, we next pick the subject to be photographed. Perhaps one of the most fascinating is the filming of wildlife in its native habitats.
a lady. And in conclusion, we often find a simple hobby is not only a source of great personal satisfaction, but also the happy means to financial independence. Some ducks and some ducks and some ducks. I'm a going to hunt some ducks for my fair lady. <laughs> I'm a deedle. Good morning. Deedle dum, deedle 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 dum. Hold a deedle deedle dum for my fair lady. <laughs> The skies are loaded with them. <laughs> she works. Hey, where'd she go? Oh, there you are. Okay, Clementine, bring them in. <laughs> Something wrong here. Uh, somebody ain't telling the truth. Clementine?
Uh oh, <laughs> a quacker.
Are you feeling better, miss? Here we are out at the Elite Deluxe Sports Palace about to witness one of the biggest ice hockey games of the season, bringing together two of the top-ranking teams in the league. In no other game is the feeling of competition so keen, affecting both players and spectators alike, turning casual friends into bitter enemies. Tonight's game looks like a sellout. A capacity crowd of thousands of rabid sports-loving hockey fans has turned out to cheer for their favorite teams. Yes, sir, the stands are filling up. They're really packing them in. Well, it seems there have been a few last-minute changes in the starting lineups. Get your pencils ready. Now, huh? instead of Hannah at left wing, Stallings will start. Put DeGrady in face of Williams at center, then Berg over Aliquist, and at left defense, McCormick replaces Dunham. At goal, the Angham takes the place of Nichols, and, oh yes, the, the teams will be the Loose Leafs versus the Anteaters instead of the Moose and Pelicans. All right, the teams are skating out onto the ice. Listen to that ovation. Here come the two stars of their teams, Icebox Bertino and Fearless Ferguson. A heated rivalry has developed between these two boys. Both are tied for the top league scoring honors, and tonight's game will be the payoff. As these boys go, so go their clubs. 
The referee for tonight will be that popular arbiter, Clean Game Kinney. A favorite of the fans. The entire responsibility of the game rests squarely on the shoulders of the referee. This keen-eyed individual must follow the course of play so closely that sometimes it seems he must have eyes in the back of his head. Uh oh A penalty! There go the guilty players into the penalty box. With these stars out, the complexion of the entire game may be changed. A hush of expectancy settles over the crowd as the teams line up for the face-off. The referee drops the puck, and the game is on! There goes the puck over the blue line, passed out to the right wing, checked by the opposing left wing, who passes the puck back to the right defense, cutting in fast, picking the puck off the boards, now back to the left wing, and pivots around the center. They're just scramble for possession. Boots has got it. He's down the ice, tries for a shot at the net, but the goalie puts up a stout defense, knocking it away for a beautiful save. Comes Colin DeGrotti fighting for the puck. There's a shot, and he scores! No, no, no! Look at that stop! Nothing ever gets past that goalie. Murray moves it clear down the rink. It's taken by McCormick. McCormick to Papano at the blue line. Over to Murray. Murray cutting over the loose leafy defense. He tries to draw the goalie out of position. There's a shot, and, 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 and... Out the center ice, both teams are battling furiously for possession. Here come Bertino and Ferguson out of the penalty box. And there go Bertino and Ferguson back into the penalty box. The loose leaf take the play away. Now take the pass on the right side. Center ice. Uh oh, Riley sank the puck and a beautiful poke check at the end. There's a long pass rink wide and a scramble for the puck. A little rough play out there. Both sides are trying to score. And. And there's the buzzer running the first period. In order to give the cash customers a chance to sit in their seats, there are 10 minute rests between periods. Well, there's the buzzer starting the second stanza. The ice. Puck is faced off. There's a pass out to the side. The loose leaves come up with the play. Here comes McCormick cutting down the side. That boy's sure burning up the ice. Spinning like a top. He crosses the blue line. The defense closes in. Wow! They really laid it into him. Hooray for Riley! <laughs> Here come Bertino and Ferguson out of the penalty box. <laughs> And there go Bertino and Ferguson back into the penalty box. There's a pass out to Bond, and here he comes swinging wide with a blinding burst of speed. Next up is Bond, sliced his way through. Up cuts him fast, picks up the puck, takes a shot at the net, and the goalie kicks it away. There's another shot, and another, and another. The goalie has the situation well in hand. No, no! He knocks the old net for a score, a score, a score, a score, a score! <laughs> Leaders one, loose leaves nothing. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that score might be enough to put the game on ice. They line up for the faceoff. There's a scramble. Puck is boarding against the side. Here come Bertino and Ferguson out of the penalty box. And there go Bertino and Ferguson back into the penalty box. Coming up to the blue line, it's... Whoa! He's right down the crease, trying to knock the count. And the goalie boots it away from the and saves, and the crowd loses its mind! Here's the play. Mulhop hop poke checks it away from Williams, intercepted by Shaw, passed behind to Alakos, and switches to Pete, and there goes right, right down the middle. He shoots! The referee's in the way! There's another nice safe at the net. He clears the puck from the front, but it's too hot to handle. Now both teams are fighting it out on the ice. This is anybody's game. Riley shoots, McCormick shoots, Berg shoots, Pugley shoots, Weaver shoots, DeGrady shoots, Sepp shoots, Nolly shoots, Bushman shoots, shoots, everybody shoots. There's a score, and another, and another, and another. The goalies are standing their ground, but they've got their hands full. It's a free scoring game. Shaw is shooting, Moore is shooting, Kobelman shoots, Lowry shoots, Clark shoots, Dolly shoots. 
It's called a spectator sport. common cold is a tiny virus easily identified by his red nose. Although the virus wins few friends, he influences many people. Sometimes the average man seems to deliberately try to catch cold. I don't have a cold. That's true! Now look, Geef. A cold is nothing to be sneezed at. Beat it! Poor Geef. An outcast from society, shunned by a cruel, cold world. <laughs> Hello? I feel awful. Where is everybody? Huddy, Clay, Bridget, Mabel's, dinner in icebox. Deserted! Deserted by the ones he loves the most in his hour of need, alone with his misery. A definite change has come over this man. He doesn't even look like himself. The top of his head feels like it's blowing up. He feels awful. But man has always been a fighter.
home. I don't feel good. Am I ever glad to be home? My, my, what a day. I'm sick. Ooh, my feet are just simply killing me. There. That's better. I've got a cold. <laughs> nosy Mrs. Ripsnoop. Did I ever give her the cold shoulder? She tried to tell me how I should follow suit. I bet you'd have enjoyed the game, the second rubber in particular. I drew the ace, queen, and a beautiful run of hearts. Loveliest hand I've ever filled. And you know the prize? Oh, I'm so meaningful. Heaven knows what I'll do with it. Well. But anyway, George. <laughs> George, are you listening? Huh? I'll bet you haven't heard a single solitary word I've been saying. Achoo! What on earth's the matter with I you? I got a cold. A what? Oh, you poor boy. Well, don't stand there like an idiot. Close that window. Bundled up. Get off that cold floor. Jump into bed. <coughs> Mama's little man don't feel so good. Uh, uh. Well, we'll take care of that. We'll break that old coal. <laughs> Mustn't get chilled. <laughs> Say ah. <laughs> you look feverish. Probably just getting a cold. Keep covered up. Nice warm mustard plaster, just the thing. Head. Now some nose drops. There. Feel any relief? Kind of woozy? This should do it. Ah, sleeping like a baby. And so, two weeks later, Mr. Geef's cold had run its natural course. And once again, Mr. Geef felt like a human being. Mr. Geef was firmly convinced that a cold is nothing to be sneezed at. the smoke of centuries when Columbus first set foot on the new world. Ow! How? You? Smoke. Match? Match. <sighs> and so Columbus not only proved the world was round, but also firm and fully packed. Smoking became a new habit in the old world. Yes, sire. It got so man could face any test with a cigarette in his mouth. Ready? Aim. Fire! Ah, it's a Phyllis Morrison. Smokers could read the handwriting on the wall. Today, they see the skywriting in the air. The average man's habit of smoking leaves its marks deeply imprinted upon his surroundings. With tobacco, the smoker finds relaxation and contentment. A constant companion in his leisure hours. Ah, that last puff before retiring. And that first drag on a rising. Ah, 
its mild fragrance with the morning shave. Ah, that cool inhale with coffee and toast. A fast exhale while leaving for work. Ah, the soothing bag to face the day's toil. But sometimes, because of the irritated eyes, tickling throat, dry hack, coughing, wheezing, and the shortness of wind, the inveterate smoker gets a strange desire to rid himself of the habit. I quit! There! I feel better already! and done it. I sure admire a guy that can quit smoking like you can. It ain't easy. If it was, I'd quit. Quitting, giving up the habit, changed Geef's entire outlook. Hey, George, I'm a father. Have a cigar. Well, thanks. Almost forgot. You quit smoking. Yeah. Uh, what did I quit smoking for? I like smoking. I'm no quitter. Get a lot of pleasure smoking. I love smoking. It's my hobby. I'm gonna... Smoke, 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 my good man. Have a cigar. Oh, thank you, sir. <sighs> Give the smoker enough rope and he'll hang on to his habit. 